Good afternoon, folks. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm not doing well. Currently, um, I would appreciate feedback on the audio, please. Um, please let me know how the audio is. I just want to be sure. Okay, um, so I wanted to just talk about the situation with our brother and our friend in the pocket, Dumoy. Um, to just give you some update from our end, how much we know from where we sit. Um, and as usual, we'll wait until we hit 2,000, I mean 1,000, before we start this conversation, before I just, it's not a conversation, exactly. So, and, um, Uh, why I wait for you to reach a thousand. So uh, I was surfing Facebook and I came across um, um, I came across a post on Facebook. Somebody had posted. They had posted a link to Billboard. Uh, to those of you who know Bill Bold and you follow music, um, it's, it's a huge deal. They are the, the, the Billboard charts, they're very, very big. And in the music industry, so I clicked because I saw Just Sam, so I wanted to know what they were saying about Just Sam. I clicked. And I realized that, of course, now the American Idol, they're down to seven. They're down to seven. And our own Joss Sam is still one of them. So I realized that Joss Sam, so they were doing a polling. Who do you think should win this year's American Idol? That was the question, right? And I clicked. To vote, I believe I clicked and voted before I saw the listing of the seven, um, the seven persons uh, in the um, in this at this stage. And guess what? Just Sam is trending at fifty. I think fifty-four, fifty-five percent. She is up there. The next person to her is Arthur Gunn, this other guy. And Arthur is 19%. The closest person to Just Sam on Bill Bold is Arthur Gunn with 19%. So Just Sam is over 250% higher. 250% higher than Arthur Gunn. The closest, her closest co-contestant is sitting at 19% and Just Sam is sitting at she's sitting at 54% I was so ecstatic I was so excited when I saw it immediately I voted for her right there on Billboard and I took a screenshot and I sent a screenshot to um, Glendy G She's a big Joss Sammer. Big, big, big Joss Sammer. 58% now. Thank you, uh, uh, Raphael. Ivan Tao. 58%. Our own Liberian sister is currently at 58% on Billboard. Not just on Bapati, Napleb, Bapleb website. The premier, one of the premier music industry platforms, Billboard. Just Sam is trending at 58% likely to win. That is amazing. It's like you're in, you're in an election. 
your nearest opponent, your closest opponent, is a 19% and you are 58%. Are you freaking kidding me? That is a slam down. Now, if that number that I saw, that percentage that I saw on Billboard, if, if, if it is anything to go by, then this thing is a wrap for Just Sam. It is a wrap. And I am super ecstatic. I am super happy for her because she's extraordinarily talented and she is Liberian. It's been a long time since we Liberians had anything to be proud of. And so having a Liberian sister in a competition as important as American Idol, something that can make an individual's music career. Do you know how many artists, how many great artists to, to today who made who were made by their performance or by their participation in American Idol, they didn't even have to win it. Jordan Sparks and you name it. Some of you who follow music. How many artists? Fantasia. A whole number of artists were made just by participating in American Idol. And to see Just Sam trending at 58%, the top spot with her nearest opponent, at 19%. That is remarkable and I'm super excited. And I want to say to you, you all go out there and vote for her and make it happen. I think the voting is still open, is it? Uh, text 19 to 21523. That's it. Her number is still number 19. Text that number to 21523. You can also vote on the app. You go to the uh, Google Play Store, the Apple Play Store and download the American Idol app and you can go ahead and you can download it and you can vote that 10 times. And you can also go to the website. I voted for 30 times. I mean, 30 freaking times. Uh, I voted for 30 freaking times. And so, hold on. Uh, hold on. So, so this is, this is, this is amazing. And I just want to say, I'm super excited. For our own Liberian sister, it's been a long time since we had anything that really made us proud. And if this young Liberian sister of ours, Just Sam, can make us can win this thing, and I believe she will win it. I mean, Billboard has her trending at 58%. And it's not because of you Liberians. I mean, I'm gonna say a lot of us have voted for her. I have I have campaigned for her. We all are doing what we can for her. I mean, I'm using my platform. Many others are doing wonderful way more than I'm doing. You know, it's just that I may have a bigger platform, but I know a lot of people who are more passionate and actively involved canvassing for Just Sam. And, 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 and it's not, and I want to say this, Just Sam will win and she will not win because she's Liberian. She will win because she's super talented and a lot of people in America are voting for her. That is why she will win. It is not because of us, because I know many, many people who I don't, I'm not even interested. It's not that you don't have to be a music fan. You don't have to necessarily be a Just Sam fan. But just because she's Liberian and she's talented, we should support her. Period. That's the way I see it. We, sh we all should support Just Sam because she's Liberian and she has a real shot at winning this thing. So, enough said on, ju on the Just Sam issue. I am excited. You can go vote for her if you're in the United States. Now, I'm very sad. Why I'm excited, I'm also sad. Why I'm happy for Just Sam, I'm also very, very sad. And what makes me sad? What makes me sad is the fact, is the fact that we are seeing the repeat. We are seeing the repeat of the vicious cycle. <laughs> I mean, it's not, a, I wouldn't say repeat. We're seeing the continuation, the effective continuation of the bad system in our country. Fisher cycle. That is what we are witnessing. Every freaking government after government, we witness this. They come, they behave the same way. They make the same promises. And I'm going to say some pretty radical things here. I am so disappointed. Today is such a terrible day for me. Today is one of such days that I just want to give up on Liberia. Let me repeat myself. I want to make this very, very clear. Today is one of such days 
that I just want to give up on the country and move on and be done with Liberia. Sometimes I ask myself, like today I'm saying to myself, perhaps Liberia will never ever change. It's a lost cause. One government after the other. One gang of idiots and criminals behave. They come to power. They do the exact same thing. Today is one of such days for me. You know, I was at, I was running some errands. And I stopped at the, uh, at the bank. And then I went to the post office. And my mood, when I, I, I was sitting in my car watching the video as Serena Cephas, the Solicitor General, was speaking to the press. And as I watched him speaking to the press and dancing around and, 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 and said that up to now the government has not charged Mr. Dumoy with anything because they have no charge. And basically, they're looking for something to charge him with. And he said, well, we couldn't find guns, but we found COVID-19 media passes or COVID-19 passes. And then Mr. Dumoy says he owns a transportation company. We're looking for the articles of, of incorporation. Are you freaking kidding me? You said you went to Dumoy's house to do search and seizure. And, and you can't, and you didn't find the weapons. But according to you, you found COVID-19 passes. COVID-19 passes. That's what you found? That's your evidence? That is what makes Minipaka Dumoy a threat to national security? COVID-19 passes? Dumoy runs a legitimate transportation business. He's done a very good job. I'm so proud of my friend. I don't know where he got that entrepreneurial spirit. He's always been a politician. But about two years ago, Minipaka Dumoy made a pivot. He made a pivot from politics to business. He started doing so well. He's created lots of jobs for so many people. He's a brilliant guy. He simply took his brilliance, sharp, intuitive mind, which was primarily fixated upon politics, which wasn't putting any money in his pocket. He took that and moved into business and set up a transport business, a network of kekes and, and, and commercial rental vehicles. He built that business. Every time I said with my friend, the other day my friend gave me what, what, what my friend was sitting there at, uh, uh, what's the place name? Uh, uh, at Mirror's Place on 19th Street, drinking, drinking beer. My friend slipped a hundred bucks in my pocket. My man, you're hundred out for you. Because my friend was doing, is doing his business and he's doing okay. But I don't know what happened. Dumoy suddenly decided to come back because that's your real passion. Dumoy is a legitimate businessman who had no business coming back into poli politics. You know, you know, this is why I'm so hurt. Many Pocket Dumoy was doing well in his business. He had no business coming back into politics. He's not hustling for a job. He is living well. You saw the compound where Dumoy lives in Sinko, 16th Street. You saw where they went to raid. In his compound, he has white neighbors. He lives well. He has a decent place. He sleeps on an air conditioner. And I know he's not catching hell. I know he does not need a job. He was doing okay for himself. He went quiet. In pol uh, he was not involved in politics at all. And then, but something just pulled him back. This is like a magnet. We love this country so much. The do those of us that love this country so much, we cannot help ourselves. No matter how well we perform, no matter how well we are doing in the private sector, we still find ourselves being pulled back into this mess, this political mess. Dumoy had no business coming back into politics. Politics. He came back into politics because he he loves his country. He loves his country too much, and he could not continue to stand on the sidelines. He kept telling me, "My man, there's nothing I go on here. My man, I I will I, 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 I will start talking again." He couldn't help it. Hmm? He he couldn't help it. You know, he just couldn't help it. He came back. And apparently, that was a bad move on his part. But again, this is his passion. His true passion. He's a patriot. And patriots don't know how to fall silent forever. They can't. There is just something in them that keeps pulling them back. And so they went to Minipaka Dumoy's home. Dumoy left. He was living in the UK. Going to school. Dumoy moved back. To Liberia because of Liberia. There is just something that pulls this boy back. And, and some of us, every now and then, and we experience this, 
it just makes us feel so bad. And I'm sitting here and I'm saying to myself, maybe my friend made a mistake. Maybe he should not have come back into this mess. Maybe he should not have done it. But then again, a patriot never gives up on his country. No matter how weary, no matter how despairing the situation, a patriot never falls silent forever. A patriot is never content, even with his own personal gratification. With his own, if his own situation is okay and he's well off, no matter how comfortable he is, financially or economically, a patriot never, never sleeps sound at night, knowing that conditions are bad for the rest of his countrymen. And that is what brought my friend Mini Pocket Dumour back into this. That is why I respect him so, so much. Because he is a patriot. So I sit here today and I say to myself, I, I want to give up. Not that I want to give up. I feel like giving up. I feel like giving up. What kind of country is this? Samuel K. Dole did it. Did, did, what? For 132 years, the American Liberians did it. Period. For 132 years. The American Liberians did the same thing. Samuel K. Doe came to power, the first native to get elected. He did the same thing. Charles Taylor did the same thing. Ellen Johnson Sally did the same, same thing. Now George, we are doing the same thing. When does Liberia change? When do we have real change in the country? What guarantee is there that the next government from the opposition is going to be any better than what we are seeing? Somebody please tell me. What guarantee is there that if my own Benana Europe becomes president tomorrow, he will be any better? What guarantee? I'm asking you radical questions. Ask yourself, folks, is Liberia ever going to change? What guarantee is there that Cummings or Boakai or Yumbly or any one of us, if we come to power tomorrow, the country will ever change? Is it hopeless, fellow Liberians? Is it hopeless? They're oppressed. Of yesterday become the, the, the oppressors of tomorrow. The oppressed of yesterday, the victims of yesterday become, become the victimizers, become the perpetrators tomorrow. What is this with our country? One government after the other. This is not a George Weir problem. It is not a George Weir problem. It was not an Ellen Johnson Sally problem. It was not a Charles Taylor problem. It was not a Samuel Kayan Doe problem. It is a Liberian problem. We are a terrible, terrible people. We soon forget the conditions that people subjected us to yesterday. When we gain power today, we do the exact same thing that we did to people. I'm asking you, what guarantees are there if Elizana Cummings become president tomorrow that he would not do the same thing, violate people's rights, put people in jail? What guarantees are there that if Ben and Ayure becomes president tomorrow and does not do the same thing? What guarantees are there that a Joe Buakai will not do the same thing? What kind of country is this that we continue, continue to operate this, this seamless, efficient, and effective system, this vicious cycle? When does it end? That is my question to you, my brothers and sisters. Ellen Johnson Sally stood up for 40 years. She challenged the system from Toba. She fought Toba, fought Doe, fought Taylor, came to power, did the exact same thing. At least for Ellen, we held her to certain standards. We expected that she would operate in a certain way because she had made us have those expectations of us. Of, 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 of her. Even those of us who did not vote for her. Even those of us who did not believe in her from the very beginning. We held her to certain standards. Because she fought. George Weah did not place himself at any on any pedestal. He did not make any expectations. He did not generate any expectations. People voted for him voluntarily. Because they believe him to be a savior. They believe him to be different. And look at what he's doing. It does not surprise me because I know the man for who he is. So my brothers and sisters, I ask you, when does this end? Is there any guarantee that it will ever end? No guarantee. 
All of you who are going to be voting for the opposition, folks, you will be taking a big risk. You don't even know whether voting for a communist would be better than voting for a weir. You don't even know whether voting for a poor guy would be vote Because you don't even know. Because every government comes to power, they do the exact same thing. I remember only a few years ago, seditions were my good friends. They stood with me, side by side. We fought the, the tyrannical regime of Ellen Johnson Salif. Today, the exact CDC with whom we stood side by side and fought draconian laws, the violation of people's rights. When I went to jail two times, CDC, they were with me. Calasco participated with me in every protest that we organ organized. When I went to jail, when I was in handcuffs, Calasco was with me. Moba Malu was with me. Today they are in power. This is what they do. When I came out of prison that day in March, in February 2014, the very first person that called me was George Weir. George Weir called me to say, Costa, I'm sorry for what happened to you. George Weir. George Weir called me to say he was sorry for what happened to me. It is the same George Weir today who condemned what happened to me yesterday that is doing the exact same thing that he condemned yesterday. When does this end, my brothers and sisters? When does this end? We are continuing to be used and reused and abused by Liberian politicians. They are all about power. My fit in politics has taken a dive, a nosedive. I cannot sit here with a straight face and tell you that there is hope for tomorrow. I cannot sit here in, in good conscience and assure you that when people, when we come to power, that things would be different. I cannot make that promise to you. And if I don't have the confidence, if I don't have the assurance, if I don't have the motivation to make those assurances to you, how would I be able to campaign for those people to be president tomorrow? How would I be able to do that? How would I be able to tell you to vote for comments that comments will be better than we are? How would I be able to tell you to vote for Parker that Parker will be better than we are? How would I be able to tell you that Yuri will be better than we are? When every Liberian president who comes to power does the exact same thing or perhaps even worse, when do we get there? That is a question we need to ask ourselves. We've been down this road before. I've seen it all. When I went to jail in 2014, the judge was instructed by Ellen's sister, Jenny Bernard, to deny my bond. Some of the very people in the opposition today, they were on Facebook and they were and they were making mockery of me. Some of my brothers and sisters in the unity party today, who are today in opp opposition of yesteryears, they were the ruling party and they made mockery of us. When we went to jail, the people in power today who are the oppressors, when we went to jail, they stood with us. Today, they are the ones making mockery, mockery of people. When does this end? At the end of the day, all it seems is all about power. It's all about power. One group would say absolutely anything to win your votes. They will say absolutely anything to get you on their side. The moment they come to power, they change. We have seen too much of it. When does this end? In whom do we place our trust? Are there any guarantees that anybody in our midst would be different? I am not able to say that to you today. My heart is broken and I am bleeding within. I am bleeding within. Bleeding for my country. Do you think some of us don't have options? Do you think some of us don't have options? Do you think we can suddenly stop what we're doing? We have lost so much. Risk our lives. Lost our businesses for this cause. Regardless of what you say about us, we made a conscientious decision to stand on the side of the people as opposed to standing on our, uh, for our own interests and for our own sake. But every freaking time we keep fighting, every freaking time we keep uh, having that, that gleam of hope that one day, one day, that change will come, that one day, one day we will sing free alas, free alas. Then we get struck again and reminded that the vicious cycle lives on. It is ever potent. It is ever efficient. When does this end, fellow Liberians? When does this end? This is the question that I ask you. What is happening to Mini Pocket tomorrow today? It is not strange. We've seen it. I have experienced it. Many of my brothers and sisters have, have, have seen it. And today, George Ria does the same thing. And I have come to the realization, it doesn't matter whether you're country or you're Congo. Liberian leaders are just bad people. That's what they are. 
when does this end? Today, the sycophants of Pharaoh were the children of Israel yesterday. Today, the praise singers, the people who see no wrong in George Weir, were the victims of yesterday. They were the ones on November 7, 2011, where the police invaded a party headquarters and shot them in cold blood. Today, they are the same ones who had the security of the state and they are shooting people in cold blood. How do I tell you in good conscience that Liberia will change? I cannot say that to you. My faith in Liberian politicians has taken a nosedive. Yet again, I am reminded of the grim fact, the grim fact that that, 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 that stares me in the face that there's no hope for our country. No hope for our country. If George Weir, the man from Gibraltar, would be treating his people like this, what guarantees are there that there's any Messiah coming? Where is the Savior? They went to Dumois' house. They said he must have had arms. They searched and searched and did not find arms. Now they are saying he had COVID-19 passes. Now they are saying Mr. Dumoy owns a business that he does not have articles of incorporation. Look at that kind of nonsense. How does a man, even if it is true what they are saying, which is far from the truth, how does a man who runs a business that pays taxes the government not have articles of, inc of incorporation? He has to have a tax identification number. He has to have a tax identification number and to get a tax identification number you must have articles of incorporation. You must be a registered business. That is what they are saying today. The people, Councillor Cyrena Cephas was my lawyer when I went to jail in 2014. When Fumba Sali had me picked up on Trump up charges, accusing me of threatening to kill him, he, they, went, they took me to jail. Cyrena Cephas was my lawyer. Some of these very same actors of yesterday who were playing on one side of the, of the field are the same actors of today who were playing on the other side of the field. The very wrongs they challenged yesterday, the very wrongs they spoke against yesterday, today they defend those wrongs. When does Liberia change? The poor people, you are nothing but cannon fodder. They are using you and reusing you one after the other. When does Liberia change? And some of you sit there and you have hope. And you're hoping. And you're going to vote. And you're going to walk for miles and miles. You're going to attend political rallies. You're going to make your own T-T-T shirt. Some of you might even die. Be killed in accidents. Campaigning and canvassing for votes for politicians who will come to power and use you and reuse you and dump you and that's your hopes. And then again, you'll be hoping that the next man will come. The savior never comes. When does this savior arrive? That is my question, folks. When does this savior arrive? The Sirena Cephas of yesterday, who was a human rights defender representing Henry Costa, is a Sirena Cephas of today, who is the, 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 the persecutor of innocent men. The George we of yesterday, who was the peace ambassador, who they say could never kill a fly, is the same George we are today. Who is ordering his men to violate people's rights? When does this savior arrive? That is the question. Each and every one of you, I'm tasking you with the responsibility to search yourself and answer that question. I want a damn answer from you. When does this savior arrive? That is my question. Are you not going to answer my question? Are you not going to answer my question? Do you now realize that no matter who gets into the mansion, no matter how educated they are, no matter how uneducated they are, they are still bad. How do I, as a man who feeds off of his conviction, stand with a straight face and with good conscience and tell you to vote for John Brown in 2023 because John Brown is your savior? How the hell do I do that? And I am not going to be supporting anybody for a job. I would want to support somebody for the betterment of my country, for democracy to reign in my country. Earlier today, I read a post on Facebook 
by a learned, brilliant, intellectual and ideologue of mine, fellow ideologue of mine, Lamik Bagoy. And there's something he said in his post that I didn't know. And he said, back in the day when Tubman was in power, when Tubman was president, they used to do something called the Not Bad Parade. I mean, I was shocked. I was stunned when I read it. I know Tottenham was a ruthless detective for 27 years. He subjugated the people to tyranny. And that is how he, he was able to protract his stay in power. But I did not know that Tottenham did something called the Not Bag Parade. Excuse my language. N-U-T, B-A-G, Not Bag Parade. And do you know what the Not Bag Parade was? Tottenham would grab his critics, critics of his government, and they would strip them butt naked. And they will make them parade the streets of Monrovia, butt naked. That is what they call the not bag parade. When does Liberia change? When? When does Liberia change? When? That is a question. You know, I, I, is there any guarantee that your political leader will change the country? You have none. I want to say to you, my friends, my brothers and sisters, and if I will go all out in 2023 to say, to preach this message, I will. If that is what God leads me to do, I will. Have no assurances. Have no faith. Have no hope that change will come. Have none. We no longer have the not bag parade. But today, people's rights I trampled on. People mysteriously vanished over, 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 overnight. And the same people who are the victims of yesterday are the same people today who say that. I, I am expressing myself. Nobody will tell me to stop speaking how I feel. My fit in Liberian politics has taken a nose dive. When does our country change? When? If Dumoye has sought, has simply stayed in his lane, if he had continued to bury his feelings about how his country was being run, if Dumoye had not bothered himself with speaking out about the ills in our country, if his central patriotism had not been re-aroused, reawakened, Dumoye would still would be a free man sitting somewhere drinking his beer today. He would not be in jail. If he has simply chosen to be quiet and walk, walk the line and be submissive, Dumay would be a free man. But the patriotism in him, which is unwavering, which does not go out, it is what brought my friend back into this thing. And today he is in jail, fighting for a better Liberia. But even he, as he is in that, in that dirty jail that I have been in, even as he goes through that, He's questioning himself. I know exactly how he's feeling because I have been there. I have been there. To be in jail is one thing. But to be in jail for something wrong, for something that you did not do, to be in jail on trump up charges, it hurts, it pains you. No matter how short, how brief that, that experience is, it boils your blood. It makes you miserable. I remember the last time I was in jail, I was saying to myself, when I get out of this jail, I will never be an advocate anymore. I will leave and forget this country, this hopeless, miserable country. But something in me kept pulling me back. And that is called love of country. Love of country. And I know, my friend, how he feels. I know because I have been down that road. Not once, but twice. Not twice. Three times, actually. If you add my Sierra Leone ordeal, being arrested in a foreign country because I travel on a lesser passe that was issued me by the government of Liberia and they try to turn that around and make it look like I forged a travel document. When a Nigerian citizen, Nubudusi Nwabudiki, who was found out to be a fraud, who illegally acquired Liberian nationality, was able to get appointed to two government positions when he has been found out 
when he has admitted himself that he is not a Liberian citizen, but they have not chosen, they have not elected to prosecute him, but they could pursue me, a natural born Liberian citizen of Pele Herit heritage. Because I simply dare to stand up and challenge Pharaoh. I simply dare to stand up and tell the emperor that he is naked. That is my crime. Dumois' crime is his blood is boiling. He is not happy with the way his country is being run. That is his crime. But I ask you the question, my dear friends, when does this savior arrive? Free Minipaka Dumois. You will not break his spirit. No matter how long you keep him in jail, when he gets out, the tumor that I know will be even more diligent and resilient in this struggle for a better Liberia. But again, as we trek along this journey, this tedious and tasteless journey, we keep asking ourselves, when does this savior come? That is a question. Thank you so much. God bless you. And may God, may God hear our cries and send us that Savior. God bless you. Bye-bye.